Hello, welcome everybody to our webinar, Treating the COVID Patient with a High Fidelity Leonardo. Thank you for joining us today, and I trust you find the information valuable. I'm Yula Melnikova, and I'm the CEO of MedVision in the USA, Canada, and Latin America. I have over 15 years of experience in international healthcare, working in different countries. I'm very proud to be a part of this company. MedVision started on the global level 10 years ago, and I joined in 2018. We recently opened our USA headquarters in Tampa, and we welcome you to visit on our office. We're an innovative company rapidly making our product rangers based on your feedback. We also pride ourselves on excellent customer service and technical service. We work closely with healthcare professionals all around the world. I'm happy today to present our speaker, Adam Dodson. Many of you know him. He has 20 years of experience as paramedic and 18 years in medical education. And now I turn it over to Adam. Thank you all. I want to thank Yulia for her introduction. I'm here in the Tampa office from Maryland. Many people would uh, say that I got away from the snow or my wife might say to avoid shoveling. <laughs> but I'm um, here to do a webinar, MedVision invited me down and I'm pleased to bring to you the webinar uh, today on doing a simulation with Leonardo and we chose the subject of COVID as it's extremely relative and challenging when teaching uh, this type of um, scenario. I want to thank uh, MedVision for having me. I want to thank Yulia for her leadership, uh, especially during this pandemic, to come to the U.S. and start a company in the middle of this is extremely challenging, and uh, she's done a wonderful job. I want to thank uh, Marion and Brad and the MedVision team uh, for not only the accommodations, but assistance in helping pull this off. Uh, I need to go through some disclosures and disclaimers. Um, the uh, disclaimers, uh, please function with your uh, CDC guidelines, your institution protocols, your local and state protocols or guidelines. Uh, simulation uh, that you're gonna see and the cutaways and the videos that I'm gonna be doing, I do not have on PPE, gown and gloves uh, in an effort to save that for real patient care. Um, so just to reiterate, please follow your local guidelines, protocols, and procedures. Um, we're happy to discuss the technology, the simulation, the physiology, the pathophysiology, but I really want to stick to uh, the relevance of my, my invite here and MedVision's objectives and focus on uh, the technology and the simulation and the challenges within the education, not so much uh, debate medicine and the qualities. Our objectives, uh, for those of you who are coming to us online, um, we're going to go over software and how easy it is to use. We're going to discuss and have a brief demonstration of Leonardo and that technology. We're going to go through and have a Q&A session. Um, the faster I can get through the material, the more times we're going to have for Q&A. Uh, the, the questions are being moderated, uh, so as common questions come in, um, Marion will compile them all together. And when we hit that um, part in the, in the slide deck, uh, we'll go ahead and get through as many questions as we can. I appreciate you all for joining us. I'm uh, grateful to more than 20 countries that have joined us here today. Uh, Nigeria, Russia, Spain, Portugal, Canada. I saw many friends from all these different countries and, and uh, even throughout the US. So I'm happy to uh, be able to connect with you guys through this webinar. Uh, Leonardo, so um, as Julia did uh, said, mentioned in her introduction, um, he came to the United States in 2018. Uh, my first experience with him was in 2018. Uh, the company based out of um, Kazan, Russia, had uh, come to the U.S. Uh, they presented him. I had the first beta version when I was at Johns Hopkins, and we used him um, or I used him in a variety of different capacities, scenarios, research, mass casualty incidents, and uh, got to get really familiar with him. The first rendition 
was a hairless, bald guy. Uh, and then the second version, 2.0, had this um, picture that you guys can see, this beautiful head of hair. So um, he continues to improve. The technology is continuing to get better. And um, we'll show you some of the things that we're here for. So the objectives discussing is programming. Um, I created this COVID scenario for MedVision in about 22 minutes. Um, Usually uh, simulation programming is very linear, so it's um, sometimes challenging. Imagine if you had a difficult airway scenario and you and I were working on it together. Um, we might come up with a dozen different ways that our learners are gonna go and try and, and do an LMA and one might bag and one might trach and one might intubate and one might CPAP. And so all the different paths and avenues we might consider, we're still gonna miss something. So um, sometimes, programming can be a bit of challenge because we can't forecast what the learners are going to do. Um, they could go off script. Um, and in the real world, if they did that action, it might actually code the patient. And that's not our objective. So um, there are barriers in programming. Um, you should see statistics that say, you know, a majority of people used to operate on the fly, but over the last five years, those statistics are changing. A lot of people like to use programs. For me to do this in 22 minutes, I was actually impressed. I hadn't done a whole lot of programming and it was easy for me. Um, this is their user interface. You can just go to Scenario Constructor. I started with, um, let me get my pointer here for you guys. I went to their Scenario Constructor, went to New. It starts off with initial state. So I created, those symptoms, which would be relatively seen in a patient suspected of coronavirus. His heart rate's accelerated. His respiratory rate, he is tachypnic. He is severely hypoxic. His end title is high. His blood pressure is low. And at 39 Celsius gives him a fever of just a little above 102. So, uh, he's definitely suspicious. If you saw this patient, uh, as I wrote the scenario, it just says he presents. So whether you're EMS or you're nursing or wherever you are, um, you might see this kind of patient. <clears throat> um, when you program, you can program to action or you can program to time. So in action, let's say that you, you reached over and you touched the patient's pulse. Uh, the mannequin would have sensors that senses that you touched him. You touched his carotid pulse and you checked it for 10 seconds, whatever. Um, after you did that, he coded. Or after you did that, he deteriorated. Or after you did that, he becomes cyanotic. So you can program to action, and sometimes your action causes a reaction, or you can program the time. So in this scenario, at two minutes, it gives you enough time to come in, do your ABCs, introduce the patient, start some assessment, get familiar, you know, connect them to the monitor, you see the initial set of vital signs, and then he's going to deteriorate. Um, throughout the slide deck, you'll see this, uh, this program running live. At two minutes, he deteriorates. So he's going to become more tachypnic. His respiratory rate's going to pop over that 38, that threshold. Sats go down a little bit more. He becomes more acidotic. The blood pressure goes up a little bit. This is based on the intervention that you've given some fluids at this point. Um, and the temperature came down based on um, treatment that he took Tylenol on the way or that you gave it to him prior to being seen or at being seen. So there are some changes there that are relative. You can have changes happen over time. If I change the heart rate from 116 to 130 over five minutes, well, you might not even recognize that. But if you do it within three or you have ASAP, it's going to flip right away and somebody might catch that or alarm might go off since it's over 120. Um, at the three minute mark, it'll go to recovery. The patient's now intubated, stabilized, uh, you know, our heart rate's down. He's controlled under paralytics, uh, rest set rate on the ventilator. You guys are going to see that. His SATs come up to 90 um, based on our present uh, patient presentation. You're not going to see SATs get a whole lot better and some of the sick patients that we're seeing. Um, the end title improves. We just need more time to blow off that acidosis. The end title CO2 waveform changes, so you can 
So you were having problems with inspiratory and expiratory pressure. Um, it's not related to the shark fin, but it's more related to a new uh, pneumonia type of entitled waveform. The uh, blood pressure and, and temperature remain the same. So uh, this is my first cutaway. Uh, I'm going to flip. Here. 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 So this is the exact program that you guys are witnessing. I just wanted to show you how easy this is. You can move it around. You can provide directions. Where do we go next? Do I want to skip? Um, you know, sometimes you get those superstar clinical providers and, uh, you know, they're, they're so good that they're going to skip certain steps in the program. So you, you have to have things that slow them down. You know, I need them for five minutes or 20 minutes till our next rotation. So, so sometimes in programming, you can put in other steps like that to slow them down. Maybe the IV was difficult and you want them, all right, they're going to have to do an IO or, so you can have steps or interventions or things in there that you can have to slow them down. Um, you can edit these. You can try this, it blows up really large. Um, this is a segue. Oh, is it sharing that? Good. Um, this is a segue between all of his different actions and stuff. I'm gonna go over those on another slide. Um, real easy to change stuff. If you wanted to change things in the programming, you could change things in the programming. And then you can come out. Go back to slide deck. Good. Okay, um, here's our scenario and our introduction. So we have a 45-year-old patient who woke up, increased shortness of breath, non-compliant male. So he just doesn't take his medicines. He doesn't see a doctor regularly. He's past the age of 40. He should be getting well care checkups. Polyuria, so he's peeing all the time. He's got some sleep apnea. He's on BiPAP at night, or at least he's supposed to be. His wife gave him some prednisone prescription that she had left over in the cabinet. Uh, to sink in that that would make him feel comfortable. He sounded a little wheezy or decreased. And, you know, she teaches school health. So she wanted to help the patient out. Um, you're seeing the patient. He's now tripod in the bed. So this is our guy, Phil. As you see him here, um, one of the staff members here told me he was in the lotus position. <laughs> and uh, he's in the bed. Uh, this articulation of, of Leonardo is impressive that you can see. Um, you know, he can move his joints in all different directions. He's great for physical therapy. He does all kinds of stuff. Uh, within the scenario programming under description, um, that's where you, if you're nursing, you would find your H&P. You might find other things about relative to the case. Uh, uh, learning objectives, just like our webinar today had learning objectives. He had three uh, easy learning objectives when we created this scenario, um, just for them to identify necessarily didn't, again, wasn't arguing about treatment, but we want them to identify it, we want them to protect herself, uh, just, you know, scene safety, patient safety, provider safety. And in the last objective, I believe, was um, initiating some form of treatment while they're waiting. You put them on oxygen, start an IV, get, get some basic care going. Uh, the last tab, media files. <clears throat> this allows you to add all kinds of things. Films, labs, chemistry, ultrasound. I even saw a drop down in there when I was programming for transdoppler cranial ultrasound. So it's really impressive. It's robust. You can add all kinds of stuff. Just as you're viewing MRIs or CAT scans and you're flipping through on your uh, software within your um, hospital residence, you know, even ambulance with technology, some that have. Um, the software exists in here that it works the same way. It's user friendly. Um, I, aim for the media here, added uh, high ferritin levels, uh, elevated lactate, some things that would be suspicious. You can totally set up as labs. You can um, use uh, materials um, such as labs or things that 
you want to print upload you can upload or you can just you know create a text box and put them in within the text box <clears throat> this is the program that you saw it's running now live started here um if you recall in the program features at two minutes we're going to have an action change again at uh three minutes after that you're going to have an action change I'm going to go over some of his features while we're waiting for the two-minute bell, and then I'll fast forward to the five-minute bell. Um, as you saw in the program, the heart rate, SATs, initial presentation, his blood pressure, temperature. Uh, within uh, this feature, so for the brain as they have it, this is user um, interface or the software is super easy. Um, for the brain, this is where you'd find seizures. Uh, Leonardo does have tonic, clonic capability for convulsions or seizures. He has trismus uh, where they can lock down his jaw. Um, uh, <clears throat> next for the face here, you're looking at the airway stuff. Uh, he has tongue edema or tongue fallback, pharyngeal obstruction, laryngeal spasms. He's a really good um, um, cricothyroidomy membrane. He's got two different inserts for uh, easy and edematous. Uh, a little bit. We we kept him um, simple and, and non difficult for this scenario. He's a hundred and fifty pound male, six foot tall, I believe it was. Uh, coming down that left column is the lungs. So for lungs, we have um, resistance and compliance are the most important. Through this scenario, you'll see where we're actually going to be kicking the vent. Um, we're resisting it. We have compliance issues, and you'll see the vent alarm. Um, it's really good things uh, with his lung capability. Um, it's set up on degrees, so do you want it to be 33%, 66%, 100%, 25%? You can, you can range it on how much resistance or compliance you want. The three blood droplets are um, for blood. The single blood droplet is for clear fluids. So for bleeding, he's got five ports, which is a little bit excessive. They're all over arms, legs, torso. Um, we've used him for mass casualty, bleeding, stabbings. Um, he's really easy to clean up. Uh, with um, the bleeding, you can control it. So how fast do you want it? Do you want it to trickle? Do you want it to be arterial? Uh, volume's about a liter. So uh, I don't necessarily know that we've tried to push out more than a liter. Uh, most of it was, you know, stop the bleed and or at least identifying treatment. <clears throat> um, coming down the right side for pupils, he can have um, constricted, they, they react to light, they can blink fast or slow or uh, have a lazy eye. He can have ipsilateral pupils. He can, have, you know, he can do a lot of different things with the, his vision. Uh, with the heart, um, pulses and pulse strengths. So we were teaching cardiac cath and we wanted an absent pulse, absent distal pulse. You could put it under Doppler or even physically when you're feeling it, you, would, you wouldn't feel it there. You could turn them off, turn them on, up, down, increase the sensitivity, <clears throat> play around with pulses. Uh, the stethoscope represents sounds. So he, he has more than 25 heart sounds. It's pretty a robust library. Lung sounds, there's tons of them in there. I think there was more than 12 different lung sounds. Um, I went with some that were similar and mimic pneumonia for this gentleman. And uh, bowel sounds, he has bowel sounds underneath the stethoscope as well. For the program, I made him have a runny nose. So on that initial presentation, uh, he has a runny nose. Oh, the video stopped playing. So um, he has a runny nose during the um, initial presentation when you're seeing his uh, face. As we approach the two minute mark, um, this is the airway stuff since he's primary there. This is the things that the clinician would see. So this displays on a separate monitor. You can boot that into whatever's in the hospital, GE, Phillips, et cetera. Uh, you can run it on a separate tablet. At the two minute mark, you'll see that change. It changes here. He's now deteriorating. The patient becomes altered due to hypoxia, requires a secured airway. So he's less than 85%, you know, less than eight, greater than 38. His respiratory rate's over 40. He's, you know, uh, altered, as they said. So he meets a lot of the criteria for RSI, uh, rapid sequence induction. We're going to intubate him. You can go ahead and induct him. You can give him the paralytic. We can go ahead and intubate him. In this video, you see here to the right, I wanted to show you his airway because you don't get to see this. We'll enter the oral pharynx. We'll pass the follicular. We have a video scope. Real simple, quick, and easy. Sorry, it was uh, quick and short. I'll play it one more time. 
it's uh, using a video scope and within the experience, it, this is how simple it should be. His airway is accurate and true. When I actually looked at the cords under the scope, um, the cords looked a little bit yellow, almost like a, a smoker's cords might look. And uh, they, they were like, well, should it look like that? And I'll, they'll leave them because it looks realistic. So the color looks good, it's, it's pink. Um, I had used a GoPro camera to capture this view as I was doing it to embed it into the slide presentation for you guys. So I uh, tried to represent it as best as possible. Um, just to fast forward here to our five minute mark. At our five minute mark, we'll come from deterioration and recovery. So the patient's now intubated, stabilized and receiving support. He's fixed on a ventilator. He's improving, he's blowing off all that acidosis. And I believe this is my next cutaway. Good. Video here. I'm going to show you guys his airway and, and how flexible he is. So almost like a real person, you could do the chin to chest test, like uh, meningitis. You want to check him out or you can check out his cords. You can do some Celex maneuver. He's got a really good airway, jaw thrust. You can open him up pretty good. He, he's a little difficult, but it's realistic. Uh, the airway view you saw on the video of the Rangoscope, um, uh, for the intubation, we just kind of raised him up, did a little head tilt, chin lift, and then intubated him. But I wanted to show you guys how flexible he was, how articulate he was. We had him scratching his chest, so he can he can do all that stuff that we were doing on there when we had him in the crisscross applesauce. All right, uh, what you guys are seeing here is our ventilated scenario. And I'm going to um, introduce them, starting with the one that automatically started playing. In the upper left corner is really just our patient that's intubated. It's giving you a, a, a room view of the operator software, the patient monitor software, the patient's on a ventilator. I did this uh, in the video because of compressed time and, and respecting everybody's time today in the 30 minute webinar. Um, our patient's intubated. Um, he is a compliant on the ventilator presently. <laughs> And now you'll see the second video start. So here we're gonna change compliance and resistance. You'll hear the ventilator start to kick. Doesn't like it. Change it from the compliant, uh, they'll change it from 100% compliant down to only 33% compliant. I'll stop this because it's, so it's not too busy. What we see here in the third one is he returns to compliance. The vent returns to compliance. We reset the alarm. So on a standard PEEP of eight. The PIPA 8 is not doing it for us, so we actually need to increase it. So here you'll see we go up to a PIPA 20. The Leonardo can take a PIPA of 45, 50. I, I've increased him all the way up through ARDS protocols to test out his lung capacity. <laughs> um, 
we ran through some scenarios with the the dope mnemonic. Uh, for those of you not familiar, there's a problem with the device. There's an obstruction, like he needs to be suctioned, or there's a pneumothorax. There's a problem with the equipment. Um, so when you ever you have this this high alarms on the ventilator, that could be because of a challenge with one of those items. You know, maybe we need to suction him. Maybe we need to give him some nebs. Maybe we need to change out our vent circuit. So there's a lot of teaching that can go on here. That's not just in the, the simulation piece of it. We can use simulation to hit other objectives. You know, many people might not capture, oh, is, we have a bad vent circuit. So there, we have tools available to us when teaching, you know, ventilator settings that help you recognize resistance and compliance and, and the numbers and those numeric values and how they can, can uh, teach us, well, we haven't suctioned a patient in a while. Um, I'll go to our next slide here. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Marion Young. She's uh, the public relations uh, for MedVision. Michelle Young, share more to you. Am I on camera? Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you, Adam, so much for presenting that very informative survey. I do hope, I, I do hope that y'all benefited from it. And again, we thank you for joining. As Adam said, we had a, a really good turnout, over 100 attendees and a lot of different countries are represented. And we thank you so much for attending. And again, we trust that you got some very valuable information from it. So thank you for that. Um, you will be receiving a survey. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll receive it today or tomorrow, but you will get a survey. Very brief, 10 quick questions. It will take you less than two minutes and we really want your feedback so we can improve these meetings going forward. So I look forward to hearing from you, fill out your survey. After you complete your survey, you will get a gift card for um, Starbucks coffee. And then we, you know, we publicized it. Again, to Adam's point, we have a lot of uh, interest and attendance from different countries. But again, the Starbucks is good for US, Canada and Latin America. But we are glad all of you joined us today and uh, look forward to hearing your questions and other comments. And we had some Q&A time. While Adam was talking, I was kind of fending some of the questions. And he, we went through it very, very quickly. We're sensitive to your time and we said it would be keep it to a half an hour. But um, we know you're simulationist. You have a lab full of different mannequins and the question kept coming up. What is different about Leonardo? So Adam, could you address that? Uh, let's see, what is different about Leonardo? Um, so that's a really good question, Marion. Um, first, I would say customer service. So I talked about how the first version came out. Um, the second version came out in 12 months. So that, that tells me that the company really listens to the customers. Um, a lot of great companies out there. There's a lot of great simulators out there. Um, the uh, interview last week with HealthySimulation.com asked a similar question, you know, what separates him from the rest? And I, I really like that, um, you know, customer service is, is huge in this industry. Sometimes we need responsiveness. We need resilience. Uh, we need to be heard. Uh, we need the AHA updates are coming out. We need to have a, a tool in the toolbox that helps us teach, you know, um, to relevant things. Um, talking about tools, uh, that's another thing that um, really sets them apart. Uh, tools. Uh, you every there's there's tons of mannequins out there that are high fidelity, um, and and you want to have the right tool um, for the job. I think um, with some of the things you saw is he's like sitting up in bed and how he can articulate, you know, physical therapy. There's not many task trainers or mannequins out there for that whole discipline. Um, critical care, anesthesia, there's not many task trainers, mannequins out there to help teach that kind of stuff. Um, th this is a super sick patient, so you need to do a lot of interventions. Um, last, I would say is the technology. So to turn around a mannequin in a year and have, uh, you know, tons of technology in there. Um, you know, you, we don't have cell phones from 10 years ago. So to have a, a device that you're using that's kind of antiquated, you know, we need to have, you know, something that's going to be relative. It's, it's going to turn around. It stays updated. We can facilitate the needs of the customers. Uh, 
the customer. Well, you can facilitate the needs of the customer. Great question. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Um, like I said, we're trying to be sensitive to your time. So we have um, just today, this was something that our CEO, Yulia, came up with. We wanted to thank you for joining us today. So we have an offer just for attendees. And we're asking you can reserve a Leonardo. And of course, this is the mannequin that Adam conducted the COVID scenario on. If you just reserve it by the end of this year, we will give you a free install, free training, free shipping with the continuous U.S. states, and a free anesthesia machine software. Again, we just really want to gauge your interest in this mannequin. Again, you don't have to, we don't expect your PO in two weeks, but we, if you can reach out to us via email, the next slide, e contact us email or our um, contact page on our webpage and just contact us. Just reach out to, and say, I participated in the webinar today. I'm very interested in learning more. Please reserve a Leonardo. And if you purchase by July 31st of 2021, you'll get the free um, install, free training, and we look forward to hearing from you on that. Again, we thank you for your time. We want you to learn more about us. And again, I mentioned our website. We are medvisionsim.com. And we are on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. There you go. Also on YouTube. And then Adam mentioned earlier that um, we have partnered with Healthy Sim. As many uh, of you simulationists are on there, and Lance and his team are really great about sh sharing information and simulation information. So we have partnered with Lance and Lindsay and that great team. And uh, we had an article a couple of weeks ago in Healthy Simulation about um, Leonardo, and Adam wrote that for us, and we're, we're appreciative of Adam's participation, and we're uh, appreciative of your uh, attendance here today. Before we wrap up, there's three quick questions. Okay. Uh, first, uh, there's a question in relative to BLS and donning and doffing, will it work with PPE? Uh, yes, he does work with PPE. Um, everything from an N95 to a CPAP mask. Uh, we've had him in a hood. We've had him um, in a variety of settings. Your question also asked who would help. Um, I think where you were going with that, a separate team for donning and doffing would be beneficial. Uh, someone with a checklist, um, you could see as they go through and make sure that we've we've donned and doffed correctly. Uh, separate trash cans, there has been exposures uh, nationally um, just due to environmental services. So we have to have a clean environment, protect our clinicians. Another question about um, will it work with other devices such as ASL 5000? Um, that's a good device for um, similar things, resistance and compliance. Many of the things he doesn't need to because he has that technology within his software. Uh, there are some things that the 5000 can do that are above and beyond at an additional cost. That's a separate company. Um, you might find everything you need is all in the body of this one guy. Uh, last, about military hospitals. Uh, yes, uh, I, I do know that uh, the Department of the Navy reached out to them last night through my LinkedIn, and uh, they're working with a rep. I can send that to you since um, we've now connected. Uh, I want to thank you all uh, for joining us. I want to thank again uh, MedVision for having me, and uh, they're going to do Amia, uh, their new uh, baby, um, come the first quarter at the beginning of the new year. Um, if you have any other questions, you might try one of those um, social media or email platforms to send it into the company. Thank you, guys.